Hey, welcome to your next geometry lesson where today we're going to do partitioning. Not every geometry teacher does this. You need to check with yours. In my district, the honors level geometry does partitioning and the regular one doesn't. Let's jump into it. I want to do a little bit of review to kind of warm you up to it. It's probably been a minute since you worked with ratios. This is a ratio. The ratio is read one to three. That means there are four parts. You are going to split something up so that you have one part compared to three parts. So let's put that something on here and I have a line segment. I have some points. The points are not what I'm looking at. What I'm looking at are the sections. I'm going to be looking for a point that divides this up so that it is one part to three parts. That point would be right here. One part compared to three parts. Same numbers, but the ratio is different. Now it's three to one. We still have four parts total and we're going to find the point. So it's three parts first and then one part. So that would be this point right here. Three parts compared to one part. Two to three. How many parts is that total? Well, that's going to be five. Two plus three is five parts. And we are looking for the point that divides this line so that we have two parts compared to three parts. That would be right here, two parts, three parts. Now I have two points here, two zero and eight zero. The line between them is a line segment. How long is that? It is six units long. You can also figure out how long something is by subtracting. I am going to be dividing this up into a one to one ratio. One to one means it's going to be two parts. One plus one is two. So there are my two parts. One part to one part means we are choosing the one in the middle. That's our point that divides this up into a one to one ratio. That's point P and in, the, in this diagram that would be the coordinates five zero. You, when you come up with the coordinates you got to go back to the original coordinate grid to figure out what those numbers are. I'm starting with this one on purpose to connect this to the last lesson, which was midpoint. When you find a midpoint of a line, you are doing this. You are splitting that line up into a one to one ratio. But now with partitioning, it isn't just going to be two parts. We're going to have many more parts. So let's do it again. Now we're going to take the same line and we're going to partition it differently so that it's in a two to one ratio. We still have six units total, but two to one means we need to have three parts. Six divided by three is two, so each one of these little parts needs to be two units long. And we want to find the point that splits it in two parts to one part. Well, here's the first part. There it is right here. This is it. Two parts to one part. The coordinates of that point, six, zero. Let's make this a little bit more realistic for geometry or algebra class or wherever it is that you're being asked to do this. We're partitioning line segment AB at a point P so that it's in a three to one ratio. I haven't talked about it. These are referred to as directed line segments. It matters where you start when you're dividing these things up into these ratios. AB means you're starting at A and going to B. Now, it can be very complicated on a slanty line and there's going to be teachers who like to use formulas and stuff. I don't. I really like doing this on graph paper. In a minute I'll show you how to do it with just algebra so you don't have to use graph paper. But for geometry, I hope that you have some graph paper. What I do when I show it to my kids is we make a horizontal line. Like if we were making a triangle but we don't make the whole triangle. Just make this flat line that goes from A, which is negative 5 on the X coordinate, all the way up to B, which would be 7. How long is that line? You have to figure that out first. I know I want a 3 to 1 ratio, so I'm going to be splitting it into four parts. Well, what am I splitting into four pounds? Let's count the sections. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so this line is 12. Four parts means that each one of these is going to have to be three long. So one, two, three, put a point. 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 So those are my helping points. And which one of these is going to split me up into a three to one ratio? One, two, three. It's this bad boy right here. And so that point on the slanty line would be right here. And that's the point P. That's it. 
All you have left to do now is figure out what the coordinates for that point are. This is the helping line I use with my students so that they can find that point real easy. So let's get the coordinates of this point. Well, remember, this is not the coordinates. This 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 12. This is just me counting the boxes. The coordinates have to go back to the original grid. So the x coordinate is down here. That's right here. That is the number 4. The y coordinate, go back to the y axis, is 6. So the coordinates of this point are 4, 6. It takes practice. This is not super simple. Let's do another one. The process I'm going to follow is the same, but what's weird about this one is the language of the question. Find the coordinate of the point P that is 3 quarters of the way along the directed line segment from C to D. 3 fourths. Fractions work a little bit differently. In this fraction, they're telling you that the total number of parts is 4, and you want 3 of them from C to D. First thing I do is I drop my horizontal line because that's easier to work with than slanting lines to figure out these distances. I know I need to have four parts total because it says three fourths. I, this whole thing is eight long, sweet, because eight divided by four is two, which means I'm going to put a point here, 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 and here. So I just made points every two units. The one that's going to get me three quarters of the way is one, two, three, right here. All right, that's me on the flat line. Now I need to move this up to the slanty line. So the point I'm looking for is this one. That's point P. We need to get the coordinates of that. This is the origin. So we are right at x equals 0 and y equals 1. This is the directed line segment. This point splits it three-fourths of the way. I promised you I'd show you how to do this without graph paper, although I'm going to tell you, I think if you ever do one of these things, you really need to just go find some graph paper. But for those of you who dig algebra way more than graphing, here it is. What are the coordinates of the point on the directed line segment from negative 5, 3 to 7, 7 that partitions the segment into a ratio of 3 to 1? Yes, there will be teachers who give you formulas for it. I'd much rather just figure out how to do this. I have some segment. I haven't graphed the points or anything. I'm just going to use the coordinates and figure this out. 3 to 1 ratio means we're going to split that line into four parts. Let's look at the x's first. The first x is negative 5 and the second x is 7. So x's go from negative 5 to 7. Here's negative 5, and here's 7. This is not a number line. This is not even going to be any kind of accurate at all. I'm just making myself a helping line so I can figure out what I'm doing with these parts. How far is that whole thing? Well, to go from negative 5 to 7, you go from negative 5 to 0. That's 5 steps. And then from 0 to 7, you go 7 more steps. 5 and 7 is 12. I'm going to take the whole length of that, which is 12. I'm going to divide it into 4 parts, which means each one of my parts needs to be 3 long. Go 3 towards the 7. 3 units positive would be negative 2. Now I'm going to take 3 more steps, and I would land at a positive 1. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Now it seems a little easier. 1 plus 3 is 4, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So these are the x coordinates of this of the points if we were looking at a picture, which we decided not to draw, so that's how it looks now. Again, this is a helping line. This isn't any kind of accurate. The ratio is 3 to 1. So which one of these points is going to split me 3 to 1? 3 to 1, 2, 3, right here. This is going to be the x-coordinate for our answer. We don't know the y-coordinate. We just know the x-coordinate right now. We're done with that. We're going to repeat that process for the y-coordinates. Clear off my space. My y's are going from 3 to 7. Well, how far is that? Well, that's 4 units. Easy, right? 7 minus 3 is 4. I need to split 4 into 4 parts. That means each one is worth 1. So 3 plus 1, that's going to be 4. Add 1. We get a 5, add 1, we get a 6. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's easy. OK, which point splits us into a ratio of 3 to 1? 1, 2, 3, right here. So it's 6. The y-coordinate of our answer is 6. That's how you do it when you don't have graph paper. I don't think that's super easy, but this wasn't too bad. We're going to do the same thing. We have a directed line segment that's going to go from 8, negative 1 to negative 6, negative 8. 
and we're going to partition this into a ratio of 3 to 4. So that means we are looking for 7 parts. Let's do the x's first. We're going to go from 8 to negative 6. If you want to know the distance between two numbers, you subtract. 8 minus a negative 6 is the double negative changes to a plus, so we end up with 14. I need 7 parts, so I'm going to take that 14 and divide it by 7, and I get 2. We're starting with 8. We have to land at negative 6. I'm going to use this little line to help me count up. I know they're going to be 2. Now, if we're going from 8 to negative 6, that means we are going down. The next one would be 6. Then go down 2 more. We got to go to the 4, go down 2 more, we get to 2, go down 2 more, we get to 0, and go down 2 more, we get to negative 2, go down 2 more, you get to negative 4, go down 2 more, you end up to negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have 7 parts, which is the point that's going to get me 3 to 4. There's 3 pieces. There's four pieces, so that, now since these are the x's, that is the x-coordinate of our answer. We're going to follow the same process and do it with the y's. The y's are negative 1 and negative 8. To find the distance between them, I am going to subtract negative 1 minus a negative 8 would be negative 1 plus 8. That turns out to be 7. I need to take that 7 and divide it up into 7 parts, which is hella easy. That's a 1. Then I make this little helping line for myself. I'm starting at negative 1 and going to negative 8. It's moving by 1s. It's just getting more negative. So it's negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. Find the point that splits this little segment into 3 parts to 4 parts, 3 parts, 4 parts. So negative 4 is the one that's going to do that. That means the y-coordinate of our answer is negative 4. Partitioning is not that easy. If you followed all of this, once you start to work some problems that you get in class, it's probably going to get a little bit more complicated. Watch this again. Leave me any questions down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.